Welcome to the Let's Get Entrepreneurial podcast, your go-to resource for navigating the world of entrepreneurship. Today, we're delving into a topic that lies at the heart of business success, consumer needs and preferences. Understanding what drives consumers, their desires and preferences is a cornerstone of effective entrepreneurship. Join us as we explore how entrepreneurs can decipher and cater to these essential factors, shaping products, services, and strategies for unparalleled customer satisfaction and sustainable growth. The Let's Get Entrepreneurial podcast is your ultimate launch pad for igniting ideas and skyrocketing your entrepreneurial dreams. Tune in, buckle up, and let's unleash the entrepreneurial spirit within. Your two hosts will be Professor Gary Palin and serial entrepreneur Ryan Budden. Hello, Ryan. How are you doing today? I'm doing brilliantly. What about you, Professor Palin? Doing really well. We have too many balls in the air that I'm juggling, but surviving. Don't we both? Yep. <laughs> we do understand that. Ryan, today I want to talk about consumer needs and preferences, and preferences also referred to as wants. So it could be needs and wants, needs and preferences. And that's a critical area or cornerstone of effective entrepreneurship is to understand what drives your customers, their desires and preferences. Yeah, it sure is. Understanding exactly what they want so you can cater your products or services towards that is really how you become successful. And let's just touch quickly the difference between a need and a want or slash preference, because a need is you need food. You want to go to a five-star restaurant for a meal. It's very important to understand what's the motivation of the consumer. Needing something is one issue. If you're dealing with a preference, that very often can entail a different type of marketing philosophy associated with that. There are times when companies get those two mixed up, and sometimes consumers get them mixed up. Now, if your customer mistakes a want and thinks it's a need, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You may need some device for communication, but you don't need the latest iPhone. I often think about needs versus wants in the color. A color is a want. The device or the service is a need. Very often it's impacted by the emotions of a person when you're talking about the wants and preferences. There's a couple of basic ways that I look at this, and it's really, to put it simply, one is I look at observation. I'm making an observation of both the customers and sometimes the competition, but then also my marketing research. And that information will give me the data and knowledge to be able to develop my marketing strategies. And oftentimes it's derived by analytics. So you're able to use what products and services are being purchased to see how the emotions are weighing into that. What's pulling people initially into your website maybe, and then what are they leaving the website having purchased? Or what's the low hanging fruit that gets someone interested in what you're doing? And then ultimately, what are you selling them into? An example of a company doing that very effectively is Uber. Had you ever tried to get a taxi in San Francisco before Uber existed? Never San Francisco, but many, many times in New York. <laughs> Uber was founded in San Francisco. I can recall coming out of a San Francisco Giants baseball game, trying to get a taxi, and it was hell. Coming out of a hotel, you'd have the doorman running into the street trying to stop taxis for the individual staying at the hotel. It was painful. So it made perfect sense when I heard that Uber was started in San Francisco. Basically, the founders of Uber were just through observation, were looking at the customers wanted a more convenient and efficient way to book a ride. Another example from a different perspective is Dollar Shave Club. Previously, you would have overpriced razors and with a clunky purchasing procedure. They simplified the process. They made it more cost effective. So again, they were listening to what the consumer wants and needs were. Those are two really great examples. They both cottoned on to a need, the need for transportation, the need for a razor, and then brought in the preference or the want digitally mobile applications and being able to have things at the touch of a finger were becoming wants for people and Uber really harvested into that. And then I guess the want for Dollar Shave Club would be the convenience of not going to the store. It's shipped directly to your house. Yes. And the convenience and it was a lower cost also. Right. Product development is an area that can be impacted dramatically by understanding the consumer wants and preferences. I think in terms of Starbucks, they turned a simple cup of coffee into customization of a wide range of beverages. They sure did. I mean, 
the joke of people ordering crazy things at Starbucks is a reality. You go into any Starbucks line and you can hear people that have figured out the perfect concoction of their coffee and it's almost instantaneously available to them. Pre-Starbucks, who would think of giving customized offerings to a simple cup of coffee? Yeah, right. <laughs> innovation is another way that you can look at product development. And I always look at Apple when I think of innovation and product development. A big one for me to distinguish needs and wants are MVP products. I know a lot of the people listening to our podcast are in that early stage startup phase. The MVP really addresses all of the needs and very little of the wants. The wants is what gets added into the product or service once you're at scale. Absolutely. Another area that I'd advise our listeners that are involved with product development is looking at service enhancements, because that can be a way to differentiate. Again, I think in terms of Amazon, where they have their recommendation engine very customizable to the browsing and purchasing records, it's almost scary on how much they know about yourself. I know. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten conned into buying something off the recommended list. <laughs> but personalization to a high level using technology today can be a point of differentiation for a company. Absolutely. And again, I think that's driven by listening to the customer seeing their actions displayed on your website or through your call logs and making sure that you're constantly addressing those wants, those shifting needs. Another area in product development can be if you can create a greater efficiencies. Many years ago, you were probably still in grammar school. I met a gentleman, his name was Fenner Spivey. I bet you've never met anyone with the first name Fenner. No, I have not. Yeah, welcome to the South. He was a retired Shell oil executive, and he was an efficiency expert. His hobby was woodworking. And when he retired, he quickly found out he can only give away so many birdhouses. People start running from him. He just researched wood to see where it was going. And he started a business that wanted to be around wood. Through his research, he found that the greatest inefficiency in home construction was staircases. There was more waste of wood and there was more cost to assemble the staircase than any other specific aspect of a house. So he created a company with custom-made staircases. He had about 10 different styles. Through the efficiency, he was able to save on lumber, pre-drill it, and he would ship the staircases on site where it was basically an assembly, and he lowered the cost of material and labor. Uh, he halved it to the builders. So his sale was very easy. Half the cost, here's your options. And his business increased 200% every year for three years when I had met him. That's incredible, isn't it? And what a value add to the builder, the end consumer or the homeowner. And him, he started a business. Interesting, just on a quick side note, is he targeted an area outside of Washington, D.C., where he lived in North Carolina. And that's a great example of go where your customers are. His research showed that home building in that particular area outside of Washington, D.C. was the highest percentage of building construction going on. He targeted where there was the most action. He didn't look at where he was living. Yeah, which is an important lesson and, and one that we talk about quite often. And I hear in the Entrepreneurship Center all the time. They're starting it in Nashville. They're trying to cram it down the throats here because they used to live in Portland or Austin. And it was a big thing there. Yeah, definitely. Other areas too, I think of uh, emotional appeal is another area when you're touching into wants and needs. A great example of that is St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. The most emotional ads on TV, you mean? Absolutely. But they're touching into that emotional side of the customer's decisions. They certainly are. They are tugging the heartstrings hard on everybody that sees one of those commercials. This can give you a competitive edge. A point of differentiation, if you're focusing on truly addressing the wants and preferences of your customers, also it's important to be adaptable to continually listen to the customer. Don't stop and think your customers are stagnant and they're not moving forward. Yeah, that's the death. You're either growing or you're dying, right? Constantly listening and understanding that markets are changing, your customer base is probably changing slightly and pivoting with that is critical. Blue Apron has made some interesting shifts into vegetarian and vegan options, for example, being adaptable, looking at the shifts of the marketplace. Right. 
And there's a laundry list of companies that have not shifted quickly enough and have failed because of that. Giant companies that have really taken the downfall. Before we conclude, are there any specific tips that you would have for our listeners with the consumer needs and preferences? I would just internally get serious about understanding what is a need and what is a want. Because it's just going to help you make decisions in the future. What can you get rid of? What can you change? And where's your core competency? I would add to that is invest in technology because that can be very advantageous to you. In the culture of your business, you want it to be customer-centric approach. And this will naturally gravitate towards looking at the consumer wants and needs. Perfect. This is an area that I highly encourage our listeners to keep up with the evolving changes focus on societal shifts because that'll be a factor in the changing market dynamics while you're doing this. And that could be a key point of differentiation, how you could beat your competition. And as always, let us know if you have a cool example of this. We'd love to hear it and love to share it. Absolutely. Well, let's get entrepreneurial. Let's get entrepreneurial. Get on as we wrap up another episode of the Let's Get Entrepreneurial podcast, we extend our gratitude for your presence and attention. Your dedication to the entrepreneurial spirit fuels our passion for creating this podcast. Check out profspirit.com to discover resources and courses designed specifically for innovators like you. Stay on the cutting edge by following us on Spotify, Apple Podcast, YouTube, and other platforms as it is released. Until then, keep the entrepreneurial flame burning.